Hello, my name is Kevin Greeson. I'm one of the cardiovascular surgeons here at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And I'll be speaking today about the treatment of thoracic aortic aneurysms. This is a disease that we're seeing more commonly now as the population ages. In fact, about 21,000 new cases are diagnosed a year, or about six patients per 100,000 population. The problem with thoracic aortic aneurysms is that they can be associated with quite a significant amount of morbidity to include rupture or bursting of the aneurysm or dissection of the aneurysm where the, bud, the blood penetrates through the three layers of the aortic wall and can produce significant morbidity related to that. Uh, coincident with the aging population, patients who have aneurysms often bring with them other significant morbidities to include coronary artery disease, uh, COPD or emphysema, or renal insufficiency. So a lot of these patients are relatively sick when we see them for their aneurysm. Uh, up until just a couple years ago, the main treatment for thoracic aortic aneurysm was an open operation. We made an incision on the left side of the chest, centered over the ribs, spread the ribs apart, and went down and exposed the aneurysm. At that time, we placed the patient on either partial or full cardiopulmonary bypass. Uh, we clamped the aorta both, both above and below the aneurysm and then resected the aneurysm and put in an artificial blood vessel, a blood vessel made out of polyester. Uh, the treatment of the aneurysm was usually very successful, however, it was painful and it often took patients uh, up to six months to 12 months to fully recover from the thoracotomy and they could have stiffness and pain for that period of time. In addition, the main complications that we experienced in the treatment of these aneurysms were stroke at about 3%, renal failure at about 3%, paralysis of the uh, lower extremities, 3%, and dying, about 6%. Coincident with this, over the last couple of years, we've noticed that uh, we've, we've developed a new technique called uh, endovascular stent graft repair, where we make a small incision in the groin or uh, otherwise just puncture into the femoral artery in the groin and we're able to put a stent graft up inside the blood vessel without doing the incision in the chest. This has proved very effective in some patients. The uh, main uh, advantage of this technique is it avoids the thoracotomy and there has been shown that most patients will recover from this procedure much more quickly. Uh, with an open thoracotomy the average ICU stay is about five days. After the endovascular repair, it's about three to four days. Also, the total hospital stay after an open thoracotomy is about 14 days, and after an endovascular repair, it's about seven days. Unfortunately, the morbidity associated with repair of the aneurysm using the endovascular technique is not much different than with an open procedure. Still, stroke, paralysis, and death all occur with about the same frequency as with an open operation. Unfortunately, not all patients are candidates for an endovascular repair either. The anatomy of the aneurysm has to be such that we can safely deploy the stent graft inside the aneurysm. A thoracic aortic endograft is placed uh, with the patient in the operating room. Most of the time, they go to sleep for the procedure. However, in certain circumstances, we have done this under spinal anesthetic or even local anesthetic. The artery in the groin is punctured and a wire is advanced up the main blood vessel uh, into the aorta across the aneurysm. Then the uh, stent graft itself is introduced. There's a constraining device around the endograft that once it's properly positioned, we remove this constraining device and the endograft deploys, including the aneurysm. Uh, because of the unique uh, nature of how this is done, there are some complications that are unique to endograft placement. Because the endograft sits inside the blood vessel, we always are concerned that blood could perfuse between the endograph and the aortic wall, producing what's called an endo leak. Uh, this can be a problem because if blood perfuses uh, into the aneurysm sac, it can pressurize the sac, putting it at risk for rupture. In fact, up to 70% of patients who develop an endo leak, the aneurysm sac can be pressurized, and this would be something that we would need to know about and treat. Fortunately, most of these endo leaks can be treated with another uh, endovascular procedure and would not require an open operation. Because of our experience with uh, treatment of thoracic aneurysms using endografts, we are expanding the uh, indications for that to include treatment of uh, traumatic aortic rupture where patients may be involved in a motor vehicle accident and the aorta can uh, be dislodged from its uh, attachments just beyond the subclavian artery. Uh, we're showing that in, in these patients that there tends to be very effective treatment in reducing morbidity and paralysis rate. 
also with patients who present with acute aortic dissection. In fact, this may be the one area where this technology offers the greatest potential advantage. I think the Mayo Clinic offers a unique perspective in that we're very uh, experienced in the treatment of both open aortic aneurysms and the endovascular treatment of aortic aneurysms. And when patients come here, because of our experience, we can determine which technique would be the best uh, modality to treat a patient. It's important to point out that with the endovascular stent grafts, they've only been around for about five years, so we don't know what the long-term outcome is with these. And many patients who present with aneurysms of a young age are probably better served with an open procedure. Our uh, experience with both procedures, I think, enables us the unique opportunity to know what is the right treatment for each specific patient.